What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, John, for the Game of here, welcoming you to the week number eight, or which is technically, yeah, this is week eight power rankings. I am excited for this week. This week's power ranking is going to be super interesting, super on point, I hope. Uh, this is a big week. We got a lot of things to talk about. Um, not as eventful as week seven, but it is still some big movers up and down. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed this week's power rankings. Let's go ahead and start off with obvi obviously everybody's unanimous 31, the New York Jets. The Jets actually looked like a football team. And if you can make a team, if you if if you're the team that makes the Jets look like a football team, <coughs> Bills, you got some worries. So honestly, I still think the Jets are the worst in the league. They really don't have the coaching. They don't have the ability. It was a divisional opponent. So as much as I'm gonna give them credit for making the best team in the division like look bad, I'm also gonna discredit it also in a way because it is a divisional game, and I need to see you guys against non-divisional opponents playing well um 18 points though only allowed for the bills and like that's that's great good job like honestly i have no nothing better to say other than yikes when you score 18 points against the jets um but next i think actually is our biggest faller of the week the dallas cowboys i have them at 31 minus six <sighs> here's the thing about the cowboys right Yes, the Washington football team has a decent defense and has had a decent defense the entire way through, but they haven't had an offense, and you've allowed that offense, who I don't believe had yet was yet to score 20 points except for against their other divisional opponent um, in week one. That's bad, right? It's bad when the you make the football team look good on offense. On defense... I did expect, I did not expect them to only put up three. If you can only, if you put up 13 combined points in two weeks against the opponents that you've gone against, that's very worrisome. That's something that definitely needs to be looked at. Now you're down to your third string quarterback after Andy Dalton goes on concussion protocol. That line is horrible and is putting you guys at a big detriment at the moment. You know, the once top tier offensive line has now rid you guys to nowhere. Uh, definitely a lot of scary situations on the Dallas Cowboys that need to be fixed now. They cannot be fixed later. Now they've shelved, Elver shelved off Everson Griffin, and it's a big problem. So definitely, they're basically on rebuild mode. They're giving up on the year, clearly. Um, obviously, they're they're not going to tank for Trevor, uh, but they're definitely going to have to get a good, like Pat, or Pat Sewell, I believe, is the um, offensive lineman that's in this next draft that's supposedly really good. Um, I think that you need to, they're going to try and get that top five pick, um, to pick that lineman specifically. Um, uh, but we'll see what happens. Uh, next we got the New York Giants who are number 30. Oh, oops. <laughs> now you know who number 29 is number 30. And for the Giants, they don't move again. Uh, but that's fine. Honestly, that's fine. That they didn't move. Um, because they played well against another divisional opponent. Defensively, Joe Judge has been amazing this season. Um, they are competing in the NFC least. Um, so that could put them... They still are, have a chance at the playoffs. Crazy enough. I don't think they will. I think that will go to Philly. But uh, we will 100% see what happens as the season progresses. Um, tough game um, against the Philadelphia Eagles. Um, I just want to see more against better opponents, but I don't think I will. So, um, I'm holding you off again. It was a divisional opponent. I'm not going to overreact to a divisional opponent loss other than, you know, if you lose three to 25 against that offense. Um, but yeah, anyway, uh, next we have the Baltimore or the Baltimore Ravens. No, the Baltimore Ravens. If they ever get down here, then, uh, sue me. Um, and I say that like this year, <laughs> I give you a cap on this year. Um, but the freaking, the Broncos, Got slapped. They 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 lost in a, a way that only number twenty nine can. Um, you especially at home in the snow. Mahomes was just like, yeah, ha ha ha. I'm gonna throw it all over you, and yeah, <laughs> that's what happened. Um, uh, next we got the football team. They're gonna move up three spots after that win. I do believe that they are better than both the Giants and the Broncos. Honestly, like, um. Obviously, they 
Giants beat them by one, so they're that's they got that close. But the Broncos honestly just don't look like they're good. They held a team they were supposed to hold in check, and personally, they did what they needed to do to win. And that's two divisional opponents that they've won. They are now two and one in the divisional games, which is definitely gonna <laughs> help this team make the playoffs if they can beat their division. Um, so yeah, I mean. That's what they are right now. They're just beating their division. Uh, next, we have the Jacksonville Jaguars going up. Oh, oops. Going up one spot as this plus one does mean really nothing. It's literally just the Jets or the Jets. Now, again, the Jaguars have just been the Jaguars all season. Like, literally. Um, there's really nothing to say about the Jaguars. They just have been themselves. They are the team that's going to play well against zone coverage teams. But against man coverage teams, they're going to be trash. Um, uh, next week, I believe they actually do go against a difficult opponent if they're not, if they're playing somebody. But no, they're on bye. They're one of the teams on bye. Ha ha ha, that's right. Um, so they won't, they'll get a chance to rest before playing... The Texans. There it is. I'm like, where is it? <laughs> so, yeah, they get a two-week rest before playing the Texans, and that's going to be a good matchup game. Uh, I'll be interested to see how they play each other. Uh, next, we have the Minnesota Vikings. Again, they were on bye. Nothing to talk about. Uh, they go against the Packers this week, so I'll be interested to see what happens. Next, we got the Atlanta Falcons, who are going to drop a spot after their miserable loss to the Detroit Lions and what I mean by a miserable loss is it was just lack of football awareness they win this game if they don't score if they don't score they win and knock it out um and I'm just gonna say it right now great job by the Lions players basically trying to force him to score that was what we call a heady play a play in which you know what the situation is. You know what you want to do. Um, and the Lions did that. They knew that if they scored, it gave them a chance. And, and what I mean by scored is if they scored a touchdown, it gave them a chance to go down the field and win that game. If the Falcons player does not score there, the Lions do end up losing because the field goal wins it. So honestly, amazing job um, for the Lions right there. Um, something I wasn't expecting to see, you know, with the Matt Patricia coached team, they've really been very bad at football plays and doing things with the football. Uh, so Falcons fans, as much as your team isn't the worst, it's not, it's definitely not the worst. They're in this kind of low, uh, like low mid tier. Um, that's what the orange is. Yellow's mid. Um, they are definitely on that kind of struggle bus, uh, if you will. Um, but there are some teams that are in this tier that are joining you, uh, that are on that same wavelength. Then we got a team that's entering into this low middle tier, the Bengals. <laughs> and a lot of people are going to be like, what the heck? They're one and they've only won one win. They're one, five and one or one, six and one. I believe. No, they're one, five and one. Um, and they, you look at this team, and the Bengals should not be, they have lost way too many close games, they've played good opponents, they almost beat the Browns twice, they tied the Eagles, uh, yeah, there were some games where they got rocked, but, like, was it not to be expected? I mean, if you look at their history, their game history at 1-5-1, and one, ready? They lost to the Chargers by three. They lost to the Browns by five. They tied the Eagles. They beat the Jaguars. The only team that they've gotten rocked by this season is the Baltimore Ravens in Baltimore. Every other game has been five or less points. So they are close with this quarterback who is just killing it at the moment. Burrow has another phenomenal game I think they have thrown with Burrow so many times they had control of this game until the end the Bengals are not bad they're just they don't close they don't close games which 
is going to mean something, I think, later in his career if they need to start closing games. But I think they are on the uptick. They're a team, yeah, I told they're not going to make the playoffs this year. Not at all. They're just, they're out of it. I can't tell you, I'm not going to be delusional and say, oh my god, they can still make the playoffs. No, they're out. They're, they're not making the playoffs in no way, shape, or form. But are they going to be a team that vies and tries to be a tough out 100 percent of the time they're going to be a tough out you cannot tell me this Bengals team is an easy win literally you think and you see that your team's going against the Bengals, and you're like oh okay a diff a, a, an interesting challenge is how i'll put it an interesting challenge it's like and you all you have to think about going against the Bengals and be like oh are the could the Bengals win is that a possibility and the fact that you even think of that as a possibility means that you're a better team than half the other teams on the other side um so yeah anyway uh, moving on after that long rant for no reason. We got Philadelphia. They're going to stay put. They win by one against the Giants. They didn't show me enough to be like top tier, but they did show that they could win these close divisional games, which could give them a good leg up in their competition. But definitely something that you got to look at and be like, uh, how is it going to happen? How is it going to work? But that tie might be beneficial. Next, we got Houston at 22. They just got beat pretty badly by the Packers. It's the Packers, though. Like, you just expected that to happen. You expected them to lose by quite a bit. Um, so, yeah, that's that's it. Now, now, here's a team that we need to talk about. The Cam Newton-led New England Patriots, as they are also going to be a big faller this week, down to 21, dropping five spots. Um... After a 33-6 loss to the Niners, the 49ers actually feel like a team again. Uh, and we knew that this team, the 49ers, were or had the potential to do it, but they hadn't been showing it as of late. Finally, here they are. They're showing it. The Patriots, on the other hand, are finally showing who they are as well as a team that honestly looked really good in the beginning of the season. I thought they were a top 10 team after initially having them at 13 um, and then slowly moving them up to their high point at number six. Um, they kind of, they are showing me why I shouldn't have done that um, as fast as I did. That's why a lot of these lower teams are staying put. I mean, there's not, the, but yeah, um, a lot of teams aren't, I don't know if you've noticed, a lot of teams are dropping faster than they're rising and that's why uh, there's only one team in here that's going to have the highest movement, and that's going up, but we all know who that team is after this game. Um, like, honestly, oh my gosh, I cannot believe the Patriots got blown out that bad in Foxborough. I believe that was their worst loss in Foxborough in 20 years. Like, yeah, that's, they're, they're just showing who they are. They're not, they're not going to be good at all. I think they're in that mid-tier conversation where they're like 17 to 21, but I don't think they're going to go any higher than that much this season unless they start picking up the pace because it is still early in the season. There are still things that could happen. Uh, next, we got the Chargers who are going to move up one spot. I decided to move the Patriots under the Chargers this week. Uh, the Chargers, they scored 36 in their win against Jacksonville. Yes, it's Jack or 39, excuse me, not 36. And they went against Jacksonville. And honestly, they do. They show their they they show and assert their dominance over these bad teams. Um and they I feel like if the Patriots and the Chargers went head to head right now, the Chargers would win. Right now, the Chargers would definitely take the W. Um so they they do have some work to do. They go against the Broncos. Could get another win on that one. Um, I think they're gonna start to. You're gonna start to see the uptick and them closing games out and doing better now that Herbert's feeling a lot more comfortable in his scheming. Um, so I'm excited to see the growth of Herbert and see what happens. Um, next we have Detroit. They don't move at all again. <laughs> um, I debated moving them up one. Um, into 18, but I just don't feel it right now. I need a game, like, <clears throat> this week, uh, against the, the, where I can feel as if it's good to move them up. I haven't had that feel-good moment to move them up above that, that, like, low middle tier, um, but they're closer to middle tier, but anyway, 
Um, I need to have that game where I can be like, solid, awesome, time to move them up. I uh, haven't seen it yet. Um, next, we have the Panthers. The Panthers are a team that I look at and say, Matt Rule's done a great job coaching this team. With the talent, the lack of talent that's around this team, especially offensively, the fact that you've been able to coach this team into a three and four ball club is just phenomenal. So again, good job, Matt Rule, on that. Um, a team that nobody thought was actually going to be good. We thought they were going to be in like full throttle rebuild. Um, is not really in full throttle rebuild. They're in a. They're in a. They got to get a couple pieces. Get a good a good uh, offensive weapons. Defensively, this young defense is turning into something, and Matt Rule is part of that. So good job. Um, the Dolphins, they were also another team I was half tempted to move down because, but even though they had a buy and that's literally what saved them from being moved down. I do not like the decision to play Tua against the Rams. Okay. Like Tua against the Rams is ultimately now this could bite me in the butt next week if they win. Um, but ultimately why? Uh, why would you start your rookie quarterback against the best or one of the best defensive lines? And, and I'll say the best here. This is better. The best defensive line you're going to play against all season. You're not going to play a better defensive line all season. And you're going to play him against that defensive line. That's going to be his first NFL game. That is just atrocious from a GM coaching standpoint. I love Flores. Don't get me wrong. Flores is a great coach, but are you actually kidding me? You could have waited till maybe the Cardinals who have a pretty subpar D line, even though they got to the quarterback a couple of times, but uh, actually, no, it was only one sack of the entire game. So you could have played them against the Cardinals maybe, or I don't know, maybe the uh, Chargers who don't like, uh, there's so many options and you choose the Rams of all teams, like, oh, it's such a bad decision in my opinion. As you can tell by my rant, they're going to be knocked down. And I can already feel it. They're going to drop down to Patriots level. And I'm going to be like, well, look at this. Like, you played, you made this decision, which caused this. Like, oh, I'm so mad. The Dolphins are a team that I want so badly to be better and to do well. And then I see this and I'm just like, oh, it makes me cringe on the inside. Um, then we have the Oakland I keep calling you Oakland. Re. I need to just like slap myself every time I call them o Oakland. Uh, the Las Vegas Raiders, who are down for this week, um, they can't compete with the big teams. That was a strong accusation after they beat the uh, Chiefs. The Chiefs are a divisional team. And that's one thing that I keep into account. Is that a divisional team, I don't like to overreact against divisional losses because a divisional loss is just, it's the division. You have to play well in the division in order to be a good team, but I'm not going to overreact in a divisional loss, which is why the Chiefs still didn't go down very much, even though a lot of people, I'm sure, were probably like, why didn't you knock him down even more? Um, but I have right now the Raiders dropping four after Losing by 25, they just showed that the stat other side of Derek Carr. The other side of Derek Carr, and the other coin is he's not, he is not a, he's going to give you spurts. He's going to give you some great games, but he's not going to give you 16 great games like Mahomes would, or Brady is going to give you at least 14 or 15. And the great quarterbacks are going to give you 14 or more great football games. Carr's not going to do that. Carr's going to be more like 10 to 12. Um, and that's just, that's how it is. That's the nature of it. Another quarterback, actually, that I only believe will give you, like, 10 to 12 great, good to great football games is the Cleveland Browns quarterback, um, Baker Mayfield. Honestly, <sighs> they won, but I don't, again, I'm not going to overreact. It's a divisional game. Um, they got a good matchup against the Raiders, the Raiders this week. Um, and I'm ex excited to see what happens in that game because that really will set a precedent. They're so close to each other. That is a tough game to call for sure. Then we got Chicago. They, <laughs> oh, yes, Chicago. 
Okay. So, we have to talk Chicago. I finally was like, oh, you're not a pretender team. You actually could be a contender. I drastically moved you up. Drastically moved you up. This week. And I should have seen it coming. Because we all knew this was going to happen. And I should have kept you at like 13 or 12. But I decided, you know what? You, your defense has been carrying you. You're going to be fine. You're going to be 12 and 4. Which I didn't want to admit. <laughs> and here we are. <laughs> uh, I should have taken into account the teams that you played. But I didn't. And that's my bad. But oh my god, you played like horrible. Your offensive points per game ranking is 27th with less than 20 points a game. And that's not going to get you anywhere. The only reason you're where you are is your defense actually does well. Without your defense, you'd be literally probably bottom of the league. Bottom of the barrel. All the defensive players on the Bears should just go now. Like, leave the Bears. The Bears are not going to do anything for you. They're going to make your team look way worse than they actually are because that offense is trash. Khalil Mack, come to Seattle. Just give you, just cut your contract just a little bit. I'm joking. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have Khalil cut his contract. Oh my God! If Khalil went to Seattle, that'd be freaking dope. That's not gonna happen. But you know, honestly, just Bears defense. Just play like your offense does nothing for you because I don't. Um. So anyway, moving on. We got the 49ers moving up seven spots after their back uh, 33-6 to win against the Patriots. The 49ers are back. They are. And as a Hawks fan, I hate to admit that because this is the first NFC West team <laughs> in the power rankings. And they're 13, which means they're in like that potential playoff bracket. And I'm just like, oh my god. They're the worst team in our division right now, technically speaking. And they're in the playoff bracket. That scares me. <laughs> it really does. I don't even want to be like, I, like the fact, I mean, we play them this week and I'm scared because they're back. Um, obviously, we're not going to look like the Patriots, though. That's for sure. If we look like the Patriots, then, oh my gosh, we have some work to do. Now, our defense, on the other hand, is going to look like the Patriots. That I could see. But, <laughs> but anyway, I think that this team is going to be great. Um, this team has chances to make the playoffs. Um, uh, I'm not 100% sold just because they did flop in the beginning of the season, but they are getting better, um, uh, and are something to look forward to. Uh, next we got the Indianapolis Colts sitting at 12, um, adding a spot mainly due to the Chicago's fall, um, uh, but I believe this is the highest that they have been all season, um, but they, I believe, were also, were, well, who were they, who were they playing? I believe they were on a bye as well. Yeah, they were. They were also on a bye, so nothing much to talk about. Uh, next, we got the Buffalo Bills. Sorry for that. I keep moving up my chair. That's probably not the smartest idea. The Buffalo Bills drop a spot. Again, I'm not going to overreact to that divisional game because they're still a really good team. But you made the Jets look like a football team, and that's concerning. You have lost. You lost two straight coming into that game. You're starting to fall apart at the wrong time. I feel like you did peak in week four, and that's a bad, um, obviously, so I hope that maybe we can see a resurgence with this team, um, and see this team become better and get better, um, but yeah, they're definitely in a scary spot, and you don't want to see this team falter even more, because they could, um, and it's a potential against the Patriots, um, again, another divisional opponent, I wouldn't overreact if they lost, but also, it'd be scary for them, um, next, we got the Arizona Cardinals. They move up four spots after their amazing win against the Seattle Seahawks. And that pains me to say, <laughs> as a Hawks fan, that really does pain me to say that they had an amazing win in State Farm Stadium. The first time that they have won in State Farm Stadium since 
against the Seahawks since 2012. Like, it's been eight years. I figured that, you know what? I, in Seattle, this team is great, but away, and like, when Seattle comes to Arizona, this team tends to lose. So I was kind of hoping that, you know, when we were up 27 to 7, or 20, uh, it was 34 to 24 with five minutes left, that we'd be fine. But here we are, the Seahawks made a bunch of mistakes, terrible mistakes, mind you, um, and they got three interceptions on Wilson, something Wilson doesn't do very often. They just played like they wanted the win more and I hate saying that because obviously every NFL team is gonna play because they want to win but the Cardinals just look the part the Cardinals just they feel like that dark horse in the playoffs the dark horse in the division that could win the division um, with the fact that they've they're the only two and O team in the division right now they're the only team that has gone to know in the division. Um, so good job, uh, Cardinals. I'll be interested and excited to see you guys play in week nine because I believe it's your bye week this week. Because, of course, oh, yeah, you go into your bye and then go against the Dolphins. So you should be fine. Uh, but, yeah, we'll see what happens uh, in the next coming weeks for the Cardinals. I want to I wanna see what happens in this division. This division has been crazy um, and has three top ten teams. So definitely fun. Um, next, oh, oops. <laughs> next we got the Saints moving up two spots. Uh, the Saints, they're a weird team, okay? And the reason I say that they're a weird team is they're a team that could easily not be top 10, um, with the way that they've been playing. But honestly, what I see from the Saints is a team that has adversity, that shows it every week. I'm um, in a team that really could do anything anytime. I just don't see them being in the top five, but I see them in the top 10 for sure. Um, next, we got the Los Angeles Rams going down a spot despite their 14 point victory. I just was really more impressed with another team that's going to come up here. Um, but honestly, the Rams just. I don't know about the Rams. I just don't know. That's the thing. You don't know what they're going to do and how they're going to react um, on a week-to-week -week basis. They scored 24 points against a defense that has been very good. Um, definitely see them doing great throughout the season. They just, they're, yeah, they just didn't show it. They need to show it more. Um, next, we got Tennessee also dropping a spot. They lost, but I'm not going to overreact. This was a battle of undefeateds there was no way that one of these teams were going to get one out und not undefeated anymore um and unless i guess tie but which they were gonna go to overtime if he didn't miss the kick and unfortunately for guskowski he did and that's gonna put some hurting on this team but, but if you lose because you barely missed a field goal i'm not gonna penalize you like and i say barely because it was a barely missed field goal um but the team that i moved down these teams four is the Buccaneers who are going to move up three spots this three spot raise is very well deserved you got 45 points up on this Raiders ball club yes this Raiders ball club has not been great defensively but 45 points is just a ton of points if you could put up 45 points in a game you're going to win um and yeah honestly the Buccaneers are just getting stronger. They're getting better. And they're going to be scary throughout the season. This week, they go against the Giants, and this should be a W. Um, if somehow it's not, then I'm going to laugh really hard. Um, but, yeah, this team does feel – has the feel of a potential top five team. They just aren't there yet, in my opinion. Um, but they're getting there. They're, they're just – there's five teams ahead of them are – definitely they're really close and that's the thing with like one through ten is they're like any of these teams could lose to each other <laughs> at any point um and yeah so here we go then we got number five green bay uh they're gonna move up a spot and yeah they were the team that i was potentially gonna flip-flop funny enough because green bay did get slaughtered by the buccaneers already um uh, and honestly i probably should have um, to be fair, like a lot of Tim, uh, Packers and Tampa Bay fans would probably be like, you should have flipped them. And I agree. I could probably should have flipped them, but I have faith in Aaron Rodgers to make me look right <laughs> against the Vikings. Um, but I don't, I would not be surprised next week if they flip because 
Uh, both teams are playing terrible teams. Um, and I want to see who does better. <laughs> That's literally what it is. It's a who is going to do better, not against each other. Um, number four is Baltimore. I'm going to keep Baltimore where they are. They were on a bye week, so nothing really to maneuver or change with them. Um, next, we got the Seattle Seahawks at three, dropping a spot. Now, this is where a lot of people are going to be like, wow, you only dropped them a spot, I believe. And yes, again, it's a top 10 divisional opponent. This division is going to hurt each other. I don't see any. I mean, the, the Cardinals might have the best in division record. I can see it very easily. The Cardinals being four and two in the division. And why do I say four and two is going to be the best in the division? Because it really is four. And I, I expect every team in this division to go four and two or less. There's going to be no team in this division that's going to go five and one. I just I don't see it. So because of that, the Seattle Seahawks are still an amazing team. They pick up a defensive linemen, which they need very badly. We'll see how Carlos Dunlap from the Bengals actually does with this team and see what happens. Um, but I do see this team like still as a top five team. I think that any like and I told I I said this in another power rankings video. I said that four to six is pretty even for this team. The reason why they're not four is because I didn't see anything from the Baltimore Ravens because they didn't play. Literally, I think on they, like four to six is a great spot for this team. I have them a little bit overrated at three, but also we'll see what happens next week. If next week they lose, then they start dropping. Sadly, and I don't I don't want that to happen. I let go, go Hawks. I need them to win. Um. Okay. Next, we got number two, the Pittsburgh Steelers moving up a spot. Um. Honestly. They did great next last week. Uh, they're getting close to the number one team. I know that they're the number one record, but I want to see them against the Ravens. I want to see them do great um, against the Ravens. Again, if the Ravens lose, it's not. It, it depends on the other teams behind them. And same with the Seahawks. It depends on the teams behind them to see what happens to them in the power rankings. But yeah, honestly, uh, it'll be <laughs> interesting to see. And then you got the Chiefs who just routed like they were supposed to. Um, and so, yeah, that's kind of the power rankings as they are set at the moment. Biggest rides are being the 49ers and biggest faller being the Chicago Bears and the Cowboys. Um, but how'd you like these rankings? Let me know. Um, uh, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and give you my power moves game of the week. So there's three games on this power moves game of the week. As I do every week, we have the first one. Um, uh, actually, should I go in order of when they get played? Because they all get played at different times. I should. So number one is going to be the Colts at Detroit. If Detroit wins, Detroit definitely proves that they are in this top 15 conversation. Do they prove that they're a playoff team? No, but they do prove that they're in this top 15 conversation where they could compete with the bears again. They could start like, act, they could flip flop in the division with the bears uh, and it's going to be fun. I want to see that. I want to see the Lions play well. Do I think they will? Yes, but it depends again. Joy said it perfectly. Joy and Steven, if you guys don't know who they are, they do uh, weekly um, pickums, and I actually am in those weekly pickums with them, like on the side. Obviously, I'm not in the videos. Um, but yeah, so. I, I don't, I think we're going to get a good Rivers, and I don't want to say that, but I do, I believe that. Um, I believe we can get a, we're going to get a good Phillip Rivers, and that they're going to win, and then there's not really a power moves game of the week, um, and they both just stay where they are. But also, the, if it does happen, if we get a bad Rivers, and, or the Lions play like they do the last couple weeks, they get a statement win, and that's going to move them up in the power rankings quite a bit. Um, next the game is the 125 San Francisco 49ers against the Seattle Seahawks. Definitely a scary game and a game that, um, honestly could go any way, um, in the NFC West. If the Seahawks lose it, they just, they prove that they're not winning divisional games very often. And it's going to be scary, especially at home. Uh, if the 49ers lose, it depends on how much they lose by and what's going on around them. If they lose, I still think they're in that 13 to 15 conversation, but it's an NFC West battle, and I'm going to be excited to see who comes out on top of this one. Um, and lastly, we have the number nine New Orleans Saints against number 14, not 15. I wrote 15 here. Number 14, 
the Bears. And I think, honestly, this is a power moves game of the week only because they could equalize each other or the Bears could finally sh shoot down even further as they are proving that they're not a high caliber team. And that's what I, I'm thinking that the Bears are just going to prove they're not high caliber. Um, like I thought initially before I moved them up. Uh, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed today's power rankings. Like, comment, subscribe if you are new. Thank you guys so much for putting in the time and watching this. Uh, but I love you all. Peace.